Hi, my name is Mary Spender and welcome to Series 2, Episode 8 of Tuesday Talks. This series will consist of 10 interviews in total with some of my favourite musicians. You can watch the interview in full here on YouTube, but if you prefer just to listen, then you can also download the podcast, which is available everywhere now. This week I chat to Marty Schwartz from the famous guitar tuition YouTube channel Marty Music who has probably taught you a thing or two. I've definitely used his videos to learn songs on the guitar over the years, and he's been such a wonderful mentor, and it was around this time last year that I finally got to collaborate with him. So I'm very happy to have Marty in this series, which is of course brought to you by DistroKid my favourite music distribution service, which gets your music into online stores and streaming platforms. And there is a link in the description for you to get 7% off your first year. I would love you to comment below and share your favourite moments of this conversation, maybe leaving a timestamp or a quote. But first, let's get into the show. Tuesday, 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 Tuesday Talks. <laughs> incredible oh thank you i i i played one of my own riffs so it won't get uh you won't get content id claimed on your video how about that <laughs> oh we, we're getting into that i was gonna go right into stairway to heaven but i don't even know if i can say the word stairway to heaven you're gonna have to bleep bleep it out bleep out stairway to heaven when i said it right there uh or hotel beep 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 <laughs> yeah. that's gonna be the title of this podcast episode hotel bleep 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 Worst titles. First question in terms of um, uh, in in terms of guitar playing, like the way you look when you play guitar shows me that you still absolutely adore it. How do you stay How do you stay motivated? That is the most polite way to say that I'm making ugly guitar faces. Thank you. Hell no, <laughs> not ugly at all. <laughs> hey, John Mayer. John Mayer makes some of the craziest faces I've ever seen. So. <laughs> Uh, I already brought him up, Mary. It's only been 30 seconds and I brought him up. New record. I still get, I think, what a lot of people get from meditation um, or other, I don't know, there's some kind of uh, therapeutic meditative aspect to when I, the, when I just start playing and try not to even think about anything, just, just like kind of go into that other uh, part of your consciousness you know and and uh and i still get that kind of peace that inner peace from from playing um i don't really have any like new favorite bands or like new players or like uh even like new i'm not really working on my own chops or anything too much these right now um but man especially times like this where i can't leave the house or anything like that i i'm just I uh, haven't been do haven't been doing this as much, but now that we're in this coronavirus thing, I mean, I just consciously play for about an hour and um, without any expectations, just play, not practice, you know, but but literally just play, and and it still gives me that like I lose track of time. Uh, I'm definitely um, at more peace with everything, and and so yeah, it's just that thing for me. I know like surfers are like that. Um, people that, you know, work out or, you know, there's all, all kinds of different things for people. But for me, it's always, it's always been that. And it's also fun to have invested so much time into something and to be, uh, you know, fairly proficient at anything. It feels, that feels good as well. 
Um, so yeah, I just get lost in it, and I'm not sick of it. I really, uh, the only time I haven't played guitar in the last probably 25, 26 years, the only times I haven't played guitar is when I've been like out of town or on travel and I haven't had a guitar with me, really. I mean, I just always play. I mean, I wish I'd spend more time right now like trying to improve and like learn new skills, but I'm just kind of like just doing my doing my thing. I don't have a lot of drive for improving right now. I don't know. Maybe that'll change. Um, but yeah, I just get lost in it. Yeah, I, I love that um, approach. I've never, ever thought about it. I've definitely thought about uh, songwriting as therapeutic, but I don't know why it hasn't really clicked with me that guitar playing is therapeutic and um, the, the state you're reaching is, uh, I guess it's deemed as flow, where you know, it just it just comes out of you, and and that's something that people really want to uh, achieve when they're doing anything, especially when they're doing something that they put so many hours into. Um, that's really exciting. I think I think I'm gonna start. It's been one of my things where I'm like, oh, I should meditate. I should meditate. I'm like, I ha- I hate the idea of meditating. Um, I just I I've never wanted to do it. I can't sit still, which I know is probably the problem, but. I, I, I'm going to use I'm going to use guitar as my meditation now after you've said that. Cool. Well, and I don't spend a lot of time like write uh, writing songs. I'm not I don't consider myself a songwriter. So I think that's there's some difference between you and me there. It's where I'm like an improviser. I play the pentatonic scale and as many combinations as I can, basically. Um, but uh, yeah, there is definitely something. I mean, they've already done you know, science experiments on people that play instruments and, and their brain activity and, and all that. So that's just, it's just the thing I found. Um, and, uh, yeah, it just, it hasn't gotten old yet, I guess. I don't know. How, how, how have you found, um, turning something that you love so much into a career? Have you found any sort of like, is there anything in particular that you do that, helps you maintain that love for it because people are so so terrified of turning their hobby and their like passion into something that that pays the bills absolutely uh in fact i kind of give advice to people about about that very thing um i can oh i want some (laughs) <laughs> sorry uh, <laughs> they haven't they haven't built that technology yet so there was a time before my career on youtube happened where i was uh very burned out on the whole thing you know and kind of regretting this position i found myself in where i had pursued music to make a living right not my joy of music but combining that i had a joy of music, but then all of a sudden having it be my main way to make a living. And I was completely burned out. I had no free time. I didn't come home and play guitar like the way I'm describing right now, where I wake up and I just play for a while. Like none of that was going on. Um, and I had, I had some regret because my, my younger brother, who's a great guitar player as well, um, he pursued a business career and he's very successful. And I was just thinking, man, I should have done what my little brother did, which is, you know, get a career, steady career, and then come home and play guitar as the thing that you enjoy. Whereas at, at, at a certain point, probably about 13 years ago, I had just tapped out on everything I could possibly, every hour in my day was accounted for. So I would um, wake up in the morning, and this is before YouTube, I'd wake up in the morning and I'd go to a, a elementary school that I taught music at about 20 hours a week. And then when that was over, I'd teach four or five lessons until right up until like dinner time, you know, private guitar lessons. And then on Saturday, it was like crazy. I, I taught all day. I mean, I'd teach like 12, 13 students all day and then drive an hour up north and play a gig um, until about 1.30 in the morning. And of, of course, the band's always the last to get paid uh, at the bar, so I'd literally get home at like four in the morning and this was just an endless cycle um i'd basically take sunday off to rest and i was barely you know barely supporting my family with that so i did regret it you know i really regretted it the problem i had was uh and this is still before uber uber driving 
existed because I'd probably end up becoming an Uber driver for more hours, you know, to work more. Um, but at that point, I was like, man, I don't have any skills that will pay me more than what I'm doing right now. Like, I'm willing. I'm willing to, uh, uh, you know, try and figure out some other career just because it's just too hard and too stressful. And I was kind of stuck in this. Um, I had no, no other better skills. Like, I wasn't going to make more money waiting, uh, you know, working at a restaurant or delivering pizzas or driving Uber. Like, it was just like I was at this kind of, I was stuck. And then, uh, you know, in 2008, the economy crashed and I lost all that work. And only then did I, out of panic, did I have to figure out, oh crap, what am I gonna do now? Like, I'm screwed. And so I started making YouTube videos to promote myself as a guitar teacher to try and get students to literally just pay my next bill. And then it took on a life of its own. And now it's my full-time career 12 years later, but I, I never could have predicted it. Right before the best thing in my career ever happened, I was ready to quit it all. Um, so it's just like an, an amazing thing. But I tell people now, it's like really ultimately, like let's say like a 14, 15 year old, you know, I'd be like, man, just play guitar because you love, you know, play it for the love of it. And if you can make some income from it, then, then great. But, um, you know, it, it can, if you get into that situation, which I just found myself in, it can take the joy out of it. It really can. But I'll tell you, the worst moment for me was right before the best as far as my career and music and combining it all. And the fact where I sit now with 12 years in, like, I still, I'm, I know how fortunate I am because I wake up and I'm like really excited about what my career is. And I get to play guitar, I get to help people. Um, I get feedback from people like, oh my, and especially now with all the coronavirus stuff, all these people are playing. It's been very good for guitar. I mean, I wouldn't choose this to happen, but, um, but uh, you know, I get to actually like do this super fun thing. Um, I'm not grinding like I was grinding back 12 years ago. I always talk about, you know, people see that I put out a lot of videos and I'm like, I worked harder when no one knew me, you know, I worked way harder. And when no one was watching. How about you? How you came out with a course, right? I did. Finally. Um, mainly because, uh, you gave me some really valuable time literally this time last year. I think it's, uh. It's 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 probably like fifty one weeks away, fifty one weeks ago that I was in San Diego, yeah, with Angela, um, Angela so, Petrelli. Petrelli, rock on, yeah, um, uh, yeah. I I just you know took some of your advice and finally put it into practice, and um, it's it's just it is incredible sharing sharing something that was again, it was very brutal to me too. Um, the, the weirdest thing is I'm going to turn 30 in July and, oh, um, no. oh no, poor me. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm not complaining at all. I realize how no, young no, I, I got am. It. Um, I, the, the fact that 30 was the cutoff point because I was stuck in a rut when I was, uh, 26. And I know that's still so young. I am totally aware of how young that is, but when, but when the when the dream has been there since the age of six um, of being a pop star, as it was, which is strange now, um, it it takes its toll on you when you're yeah trying to make money out of this thing that basically everyone tells you is impossible to make money out of, and um, I was really I was also in the same place where I I had a classical music degree, <laughs> which is valuable uh, to certain avenues um not so much it doesn't make any difference to being a singer songwriter obviously and then obviously i would i would have to do other qualifications to have even looked at becoming something a bit more uh grown up um but uh i, I was looking at the same thing and i was looking at a capped income because i was just doing temp jobs and it was um it, you know and and it, it was just a strange thing and it, it just it came to this sort of tipping point in 2016 when I was like what do I have to lose like I have nothing to lose by starting a YouTube channel I already had the account it had 300 subscribers 
and now it's turned into something way more but like I love that you're sharing this story right now because right now someone watching this is hitting their rock bottom I am so yeah I really feel for so many types of there's so many oh god I can't even imagine what people are going through it's well it's it's going to be awful um and it's 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 going to devastate some industries and I'm I'm very worried about those people and I I just kind of want to I want to do the best that I can to provide a little bit of joy in this really dark time and I think one of the things um that you've inspired me to do is like take leaps forward like you do live streams we did a live stream together uh last year and I still hadn't done one so I just took a a few moments just before this call to jump on uh youtube which no one will be able to see now because i've made it unlisted already sorry everyone um but it was just a it was a moment of me taking my own medicine because i just i'd just been talking to a friend about like just start things before you're really ready because otherwise you'll never be ready I guess it's, it, I'm, I'm sure you experience this with parenting, which obviously I'm not a parent myself, but when everyone's like, oh, you have to wait to be ready to be a parent when really you're never ready for it. No, no, you're never ready. And yeah, what is, there is a saying, you know, some very quotable thing that I, uh, you know, don't wait around for the right time because it's never going to happen. I'm paraphrasing it. There is some more eloquent way and it would be even more eloquent with the English accent, but uh, uh <laughs> but yeah, uh, oh, okay. I'm going to uh, change uh, subjects real quick because there's something I was thinking about in this today, a story that I have with you and me involved. And I'm sure you remember this, and it has nothing to do with music, actually, but it's just this weird, uh, I, I can't even think of another time where this particular thing happened uh, with you and you and I were together in this situation is when uh, we were driving. Do you remember that? Oh, so you got cut. I remember the yeah, almost yeah. accident we got into. Yeah. So we we were driving just right near my studio, and uh, I had a green arrow. You know, I had the right away green arrow, and I was getting ready to turn. And for whatever reason, just like instinctually, someone was going to run a red light right into us, and I stopped. And that was just so crazy because there was kind of no way to know that was about to happen. Uh, there was some weird instinctual thing but I just that's never happened and it just so happens that you were with me uh, and I remember it I remember yeah, that that was much. crazy that was really really crazy so it just reminds you you know life can turn on a drop of a dime I think that's an American saying <laughs> but uh but yeah I still think about that wow you know, we were lucky. But I wasn't going to let anything happen to you. It was probably because I was hyper aware that I had you a guest from overseas, you know, and I had to protect <laughs> you. So thank you. I think it's you that, that saved us. It was just me being super aware. Well, I don't think I even realized until afterwards and, and, and you talking a bit more about it. I don't think I, because I wasn't driving, so I wasn't really paying as much attention. And then when you were like, oh my God, that was close. I suddenly, it dawned on me. And yeah, I, I honestly, I can still remember the turn and I still, obviously the weirdest thing about me being an American car anyway, is me being on the wrong side. I mean, the right side, the right side, the right side, all Americans. But, um, yeah, I, yeah, that's, it's, there, there comes a point in most people's lives when they, when they start to put themselves out there, there has definitely been like, um, a catalyst for something to be birthed out of this. So I am hoping um, that for anyone out there who is struggling right now, you know, touring musicians right now are going to absolutely kill it on YouTube because they have these incredible chops and I bet they can talk all day about guitar um, or whatever kind of musician or whatever kind of, basically any industry right now could do well on YouTube because it's big enough for everyone. So um that's that's very cool that yeah that you've brought that up it's um it's kind of reminding me why i do this yeah uh and i i don't have situation like that's probably like a one of a kind memory like i haven't had many memories like where almost got you know uh head on collisioned 
but but uh, but anyway, I just thought of that because that's because that was you and me together. So I remember, I, I remember that. Um, yeah, you know, when two thousand eight, if the economy hadn't crashed, I wouldn't be doing what I do now. Um, and then about a close to a decade before that, I got laid off from a music store that I was working at. And I felt like that was the worst day of my life. But then I started teaching guitar instead. So if anything that I've learned, and I'm 45, is like some of these little moments that seem like they could be the worst thing ever can open up opportunities. I, I know for me that that has happened for sure because um, it forces you to uh, get out of your comfort zone, I think. I'm going to point down at you, point up there at the camera. Um, you know, and so it does, it, it is a reminder that you gotta, you gotta put yourself out there, like you said. So how are people reacting to your course? Tell, tell me about your, your course. I want to, I want to hear about this. I started from the very beginning. So it's a very, very beginner course, um, mainly for myself, uh, to, you know, I, it's the first time I ever really instructing in this specific long form way. And it was really enjoyable being able to make videos where I didn't have to worry about like people turning off the video <laughs> because they'd already made the investment. So they're going to watch it. They're going to learn from it. So I could take a bit more time and, um, yeah, it's, it's definitely a learning curve and I'm going to add to it. And it's, you know, people have been supporting me by buying it and then I get lovely emails of feedback and um yeah it's 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 so cool and I'm excited just to do more and you know not necessarily just about guitar but I kind of want to expand it into songwriting and singing and even you know how to build a presence online and you know sort of more more stuff stuff for people who need it right now well you have all the experience for all that so that's great to to share your experience, and I, I fan, that sounds fantastic. Congratulations, by the way. Thank you. Well, thank you for taking that time over that weekend um, to to really show me how you did it because that just put, you know, it just drew a line in the sand for me. Yeah, you know, I'm not in that studio anymore. Yeah, I did hear that. I'm in my garage. This is my garage as they would say. But doesn't that mean you don't have a commute anymore? Because I'm just in my spare room too. So it's really nice being able to roll out of bed and just, uh... and especially right now, like not being allowed out. I was thinking about it and I was like, if I was renting a studio, um, I wouldn't be able to get there right now. We're, we're on serious lockdown. So, uh, you know, things happen for a reason. For sure. Yeah. I, I was, uh, the traffic was getting, um, it was only eight, eight miles, which I can't do the metric conversion for you, but... Uh, we, we're in miles. We're in miles. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it was eight miles from my house, but the traffic was getting worse and worse. We I'm in Southern California where, you know, you have really bad traffic. So it was getting worse and worse, and I was sick, sick of that. And um, my kids are older now. Like, before when they were, like, more toddlers and babies, and it was a lot... There was a lot more distractions, but now... They're doing their own thing. My wife does her own thing. So it's a little more peaceful to get work done. Um, but I, I did, it's not finished because this coronavirus thing happened in the middle of it. But we, um, I did some construction in my house where I added a floor. Like when you walk into the first part of my house, it was a foyer that was like two stories high. So we just put a floor in and added, basically created like a 400 square foot room where I can have an office. So it's just not finished because construction had to stop. Um, but basically, I'm going to continue to do this, you know, gray backdrop guitar lesson content right here. But when I do, like the next time we do one of these, um, I'll be up in an office like, uh, you know, like um, Steve, Guitar Samurai, or Paul Davids, or Rick Beato, for that matter. I've seen you had them do this with you. Um, you know, they have that casual, like, I'm in my office look. You know, but it's still... That would be so like, cool. Yeah, so I'm going to have that, kind of like when you were on the couch with me, you know? So I'm going to have a separate set for my live streams and when I do more personal editorial type stuff and then all the lessons 
I'll continue to do down here. So I'm going to have a new a new room set up, and you know I'm not sure when that when that's going to happen at, now. Um, but hopefully, hopefully not too long. In terms of you approaching a big landmark, you're about to hit two million subscribers. Woo, baby, baby! I like the sound of that. How does someone go from zero subscribers, which every YouTube channel starts at, to two million? And like, is there is there something like actionable that people can do to be able to make that happen? Like, is it a certain amount of hours every day that you work? Is there a certain daily routine? Is it just like consistency and just absolutely just it's consistency, isn't it? Consistency uh, for me, I mean, I started this 12 years ago. So the way my thing grew was completely different probably than how you could do it now. Um, I kind of started from scratch uh, four years ago with Marty Music, and I won't talk about before that, but um, I started Marty Music with zero subscribers and zero anything other than people remembering me from the internet before that. So I definitely remember how those first few thousand subscribers on Marty Music were the hardest ones to get, and it felt super slow, like I was never going to get back, back to it. Um, but I feel like I was lucky to be, uh, consistency for sure is one of the big ones. Also, when I started 12 years ago, I was, and I had said this already in our, our, uh, therapy session here, um, uh, was that I was teaching nonstop guitar before YouTube happened. Right. So, and I'm older than you, right? So if you think about when I was your age, I was, you know, spending, you know, probably teaching 50, 60 hours a week of music. Uh, I started teaching guitar in 1997. So it was, a, it was like a good 10 years of teaching guitar as my only, as my main day job before I ever made a YouTube video. So for me, I know it was like a perfect t timing, perfect storm kind of thing. And what's funny is Justin Sanderco and I are the same age. Um, so it's interesting, like we were both at same phases in our life. I had toured, I had done a lot of gigs. I had kind of, uh, I still love doing that, but it was like kind of a little more out of my system than when I was in my twenties and bands. Um, so it was like, it was just this weird, perfect, perfect timing. I was starting to have a family. So I was like, my brain was like wanting to settle down and be more secure. So for me, it was all this like perfect timing perfect skill set for me. Um, I had also was a, a, a film major for a little while in college before I switched to music. So I had at least a little, like, I was at least comfortable with cameras and, and doing a little bit of editing. So I had that skill a little bit. And then on top of that, as we say in America, or as my mom would say, I'm a real ham. Uh, so I'm not, you know, I'm not shy of the spotlight, you know what I mean? So, uh, so that, that certainly helped as well. But I can still think back at the very first YouTube video that ever got views was for um, a channel that I didn't own or, or I was just a hired session guy for it. And if you look at that video to now, it is very different because I'm like, uh, hi, I'm Marty. I'm going to teach a blues lick. I was very, you know, I've come a long way, as they say. Um, <laughs> but yeah, for me, it was just a perfect skill set. And then when, when I started Marty music, it was like a do or die situation. Like literally like, man, no one's like started over and come back. Um, and so for me, I felt like, uh, very determined. Uh, and also I've had great help, you know, smart young people like your age, um, who you have met now, my, my friends in Nashville, made a network. And, um, you know, I've been open to young, bright ideas um, uh, and taking their advice, not disagreeing with it, um, but certainly feeling the power that I can disagree if I want because it's, it's mine. I own 100% of Marty Music, which is amazing. Um, so... Uh, so yeah, I get a lot of good help is what I'm trying to say. And then also uh, just the timing back in 2008 was like the perfect storm of all my skills put together in a job, wrapped up in a, with a bow on top. Um, but when, you know, when, you know, I 
get people asking me for advice on how to do something similar or YouTube stuff. And uh, what I would say is you want to uh, first don't wait for the perfect time. We said that, right? You got to just go for it. Um, and it's not going to, you know, you're not going to make your best, your first video is not going to be your best video. You know, just like your first song that you learn on guitar, it's not going to be your best song, right? So you got to get the reps in. And the only way to do that is just to take action. Um, but then the other thing is because, you know, do you remember the band uh, Sugar Ray? Uh, so they're from my hometown. That's like the hometown heroes of where I grew up in Newport Beach, California. But I, I was the bass player. He's uh, from Sugar Ray. He's making some really cool videos on YouTube. And he was asking me for advice. And what I did tell him, and I think it's good advice is, you know, because he's made at least 20 to 30 videos. So I said, you got to go through your analytics and see which video is doing the best and try and analyze why that video is doing better than your other videos and double down on that, you know? Um, a good example for me is we, uh, I made a, a video where I just showed my guitar collection because a lot of people had asked. And for whatever reason, that video did so much better than a bunch of other videos I had made in that time frame. So I was like, okay, well, we're going to make more show off your guitar collection videos. Let's find other people to show off their guitar collections. And that became this thing I do called guitar tours. But it was literally from like studying, okay, why is this video doing four times better than this other video? Oh, people must like when I have a conversation about like my passion. There's a part of my audience that likes that. So let's do more of that, you know? So you do have to like study what is doing well. And also I think to start with, cause people are really scared and they want to make the perfect video first. And I, I understand that. Well, if they're, if they're going to uh, try and attempt the perfect video, then they're never going to ever upload anything or finish it. Right. They're, they're never, they're never gonna, they're never gonna finish it. Uh, anyway, it'll, it'll come back to me, but that, but that's, uh, you know, you have to, oh yeah, now I remember. Because you can't make your perfect video as your first video, you need reps, you need stuff. Make stuff like as if it was for your best friend. You know what I mean? Like if you have jokes or a sense of humor that you have with somebody close to you or you're, you know, in other words, like authenticity on YouTube has always been king, I think. Um, and so if you can pretend that like, you know, you have a group of friends and your own little lingo and your, your, your inside jokes that you have with them, if you can kind of make your first content for real people, um, I think it translates out. Absolutely. I think, I think there's definitely a balance that it's quite hard to find eventually so if you start off and you want to just grow like so many people when they're starting youtube channels they're so desperate just to like get subscribers and they just want to get to a certain destination which i can see and i was definitely there but also like you have to put the building blocks in place for you to love this because it's not easy and even even when you love what you do every day, you still have hard days. Like there are still days when you just, you're just like, oh, do I have to make another video? And then you realize how fortunate you are, you know? <sighs> yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 not, gonna not do to that. that one. Um, <laughs> so I think the, the talking to your best friend and that whole idea is so perfect because you never run out of things to say to your best friend. So, if you start talking about something that you love and you're obsessed with, it will be the easiest content you ever make. And um, there's there is the you can get sidetracked by the numbers and like what does well and everything. And that's really useful to build a career out of it, because obviously more numbers means that you actually start building an audience, which definitely helps revenue. But it's it's just a it's a nice idea to be like make make things for yourself and your friends and and never change your approach. So I think I'm, I might think about that more. I definitely make videos that I want to see um, or I would have loved to see. And um, they're not the best videos, <laughs> but I 
I I also realize how forgiving I am to other people when things go wrong or things don't make sense or like, you know, if there is an editing problem or whatever, it just doesn't really matter. Um, and as long as it's not painful to watch, so as long as there isn't like terrible audio, which I just had on a live stream. So, you know, it still happens. It still happens. The things that can go wrong with a live stream, technical difficulties, is it's a real thing, especially now. Everything's being throttled. Everyone's using Instagram and YouTube right now. And they, they really are uh, being throttled. Ah, I hadn't thought of that. But yeah, I think um, I think you have a really positive message. And I, I love talking about it, especially the way you had to start again and the fact that you rebuilt everything. And just it's just so incredible. And so I I kind of love the idea that if it all did disappear for me, that I'm still hungry enough to be able to do it again. It would definitely be disheartening and it would definitely, I can definitely see that side of it. But at the same time, like when you're so driven and obsessed, I think that's what we definitely have in common where it's just like you get competitive with yourself to do better. I've had to remind myself uh, that it's the journey, you know, it's cheesy. It's a corny saying, but it really is the journey, not the destination. And, uh, Especially when I started, you know, the first few weeks of Marty Music starting, um, I had a piece of paper in front of me with, like, maybe the top 100 songs that I knew I had to, like, teach to start. And uh, it was very overwhelming. Um, but I'm like, no, man, this is it. Dude, enjoy this part, you know, because a couple years from now you'll look back and, and be like, oh, yeah, man, I did that. I did that. So, um I'm also in the, uh, a very fortunate position where, at this point anyway, um, I know who I am. I know, like, my mission statement basically is to, you know, help people learn guitar, which brings happiness to those people. It's a very simple thing. Um, and I can really focus on that more than, like, my income because the more I focus just on what my mission is, all the other stuff comes right along with it. So I'm definitely driven by... The, the the mission of what I'm here for. I have a saying, which is just keep guitar alive. It just boils down to that. And I've just used that. But uh, but I'm, I'm fortunate to where I'm doing exactly what I want to do. And I also make a living doing it. Honestly, like, I'm not, I mean, amazing things have happened. And uh, I'm not even aiming for higher than where I'm at now. This is like the most amazing thing that I never imagined happening to me. I used to lay in bed when I was struggling with my career. I would just lay in bed and be like, uh, you know, how am I going to, how am I going to figure this out? I was so, I was really struggling, you know? Um, and I never, I'll never forget that either. So anyway, a lot of food on the table now. <laughs> Well, so I've got some, uh, like a good hostess, um, I've got uh, some prepared questions that I've been asking everyone in the series. So are you ready? Okay. Which album or artist have you recommended to your friends and family the most? Mm. Well, I'm so old now that it, uh, there were probably different phases of, of that. Uh, Anything recent? Gosh. Uh, well, yeah, I really, uh, it's, it's a band that, that's not that famous from the 90s called The Mother Hips. Um, that I've always liked a lot. It's, it's kind of Americana rock and roll. And um, there you go, all the way back to the 90s and just great songwriting, great vocal harmonies. Um, and then now one of my best friends just joined them on ba as their bass player, um, which is one of those like exciting moments for us because we grew up with that band. But but that's a, that's a really cool band. When I was in high school, I was obsessed right at the time that I started playing guitar, I was obsessed with uh, 90s jam bands. So like the band Fish and Blues Traveler, Widespread Panic, who were all kind of offshoots of like the Grateful Dead and the Allman Brothers. Um, so there was definitely a time where I was probably annoying people to talking about Fish and Blues Traveler all the time. And then that was at my most passionate of like learning the instrument time, you know? Like I was basically 18, 19 years old. And then probably Jeff Buckley, you know, because anyone that hasn't really listened to Jeff Buckley, I feel like they'll, you know, they know the um, the one cover he did, um, Hallelujah, right? 
But if you listen to his album Grace, like it's just it's an amazing album, and he wasn't very famous at the time, you know, when he made that. So he's kind of an underground guy. Um, so so that would be one as well, I think. Jeff Buckley is definitely someone that I've recommended a lot. Um, and just in terms of his singing and guitar playing has definitely inspired me because also there's one song that I was listening to in the gym a lot. Um, I'm not going to be able to remember the title of it, you know, when it just comes on. It's basically heavy metal. It's like the coolest thing I've ever heard in my life. And everyone just knows him for Hallelujah. I mean, I'm 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 putting everyone um, in a box when I'm sure quite a lot of people who are listening right now actually do understand how good Jeff Buckley is. But yeah, they they know what you're talking about. But yeah, that would be one of those like, do you never listen to Jeff Buckley? Like, you oh, you got it. I mean, you know, that's definitely one that comes to mind um, because of the Hallelujah. Everyone knows Hallelujah, Hallelujah, but but man, there's some amazing tunes. And then he died super young and tragically. Um, I mean, so yeah, he's just, he's amazing or was amazing. I played his Telecaster. It's, uh, in, uh, there's a, in Paris, there's a private guitar collector. It's called Matt's Guitar Shop. And they had, Je- they, they own Jeff Buckley's Telecaster from, from Hallelujah and all that other stuff. Well, that could, that, that could lead into the next question, actually. If you could have, if, if you could have a drink with any musician, dead or alive, who would it be, and what would you ask them? Ooh, that's a really good one. That's a good a drink, uh, which could be tea, right? It doesn't have to be alcohol. Uh, well, because I'm thinking like Paul McCartney, and I don't think I don't know if he drinks anymore. I'd love to have a pint with Paul McCartney. I mean, what? I mean, and of course, I would, I would ask him whatever. I mean. One, anything that comes out of his mouth, I'd probably just be hanging on every word because he's a beetle. He's a beetle. Uh, it's got. It's got to be. It's got to be him. Um, uh, another guy who I don't think. Dr- well, I know doesn't drink alcohol. Who uh, reached out to me, um, and now because of the coronavirus, I don't know what's going to happen. But uh, a huge inspiration to me when I was a kid growing up, and it was my dad's music is Cat Stevens. Yeah. And they reached out to me a, a few months ago, and I don't, I don't think I can say anything more than that. But uh, but uh, he's one of my absolute idols of music. Oh my god, me too. Yeah. Yeah, my it was like my dad's. It was like a soundtrack of my childhood. It was my parents' like fav- favorite record. Yeah. Oh wow, that's so exciting. We don't need to talk any more about it because I'm sure that's very special, and you want to make sure that still happens. But yeah, but he's 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 out by you. You know, he lives in outside of London, I think. Um, but uh, yeah, so so that'd be another one. But yeah, I mean, I, you can't top Paul McCartney. I mean, oh, did you say living or dead? Uh, living or dead. So that works. Yeah. Well, that I works was perfectly. thinking living because I, living was like it feels like it's still possible, but dead. I mean, you know, you would have fun with Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> Absolutely. You would go out and have a really good time. I don't smoke cigarettes, so that might be an issue. But uh, but we would go out to a pub. We'd end up somewhere super late at night, jamming all night, um, and it would be. It would be a good time. I know he would be fun. Okay, tell me about your favorite piece of music gear or not music gear. So it doesn't have to be a guitar. I know everyone chooses a guitar, but it doesn't have to be. Um, And the story behind it. Yeah. Okay, well, that's pretty easy because I'm holding it right now. Um, This is my ES-335 from Gibson. Um, But what's so special about it is that it's, you know, it was in... um, collaboration with Gibson, who I've now been working with. And I got to go to the factory. I mean, it's a video I have where I went to the factory and actually went through every step of this guitar getting made. And then right off the buffer, you know, where they're polishing it, literally hand it to me. And I got to pick the color and the inlays. And then I have some custom shop stuff that I've picked out that, you know, we haven't been able to do yet. Um, But it's a symbol of, I mean, I couldn't have this like a bucket list. I couldn't have even, if you told me 20 years ago, oh yeah, you're going to go to Gibson Guitar and pick out your ultimate 335. They're going to give it to you and then you're also going to work with them. Um, that's just unbelievable. And so I hold it as a symbol 
really of, of Marty Music and the work I put in the last four years of building this channel up from uh, zero. And now I'm, I have my own Gibson ES335, which is my favorite guitar. Um, legitimately my favorite guitar before I ever talked to anyone at Gibson. Um, but when they went through their re, you know, they went bankrupt and then they got a new CEO and then, you know, the Mark Agnesi started working for them and all that. Um, that was the point where, just like a lot of other people, I saw an opportunity to try and help Gibson because it was, this is like my favorite guitar. Um, so I think the relationship's uh, been good. But I, I mean, I'm just trying, uh, like a anyone I've dealt with at Gibson has treated me super well and super kind. Um, so that's all I can go by. But, um, but yeah, this is a symbol. It's not just that it's a, my favorite guitar, but it's a symbol of the last four years of, of work. And I never would have imagined it. I would say it's a symbol of the last 30 years. Yeah, true enough, true enough. True enough. But it just, you know, that's just, that's the kind of stuff you can't... Can't ever imagine. Mm. Yeah, and I, I wouldn't have even dreamed of it, you know? Like, it wasn't something that was even... It was, that would be so far from what I was... I was so realistic. Like, in fact, when I became a music major in college, my parents were like, well, what are you going to do for a job? Like, you can't, like, there's no jobs, you know? Like, you're a rock star or you're not. And I, I said... No, that's actually not true because at the time, my college guitar teacher taught guitar at college as his day job, very legitimate, and played in bands and did recording sessions. And he had a really cute girlfriend and a killer, uh, uh, like, you know, apartment. I mean, he had my the life I wanted. It wasn't even like, it was like, yeah, just, you know, you play the lottery to hopefully become a rock star or famous or whatever, but... This is what I can do even if I don't win that lottery. It's like I can be like I can I was modeling myself after he was someone I really looked up to at the time and he did kind of what I ended up doing. If you could give your younger self a word of musical advice, what would it be? God, there's so many. There's so many. But I'll say the the first one that popped into my mind uh is dude, don't underestimate the pentatonic. You're not going to uh find the holy grail memorizing every mode and jazz scale you're you want to play music not scales and there's so much to get out of the pentatonic so don't feel like you have to keep uh leaving the pentatonic to get fancier you know when you're younger it's all about fancy impressive and fancy right but ultimately the goal is to make good music that like touches you or touches people and uh, keep working on that pentatonic, man. Get good with that. Let the other skills fall in naturally. Cool. Perfect way to end this interview. Thank you so, so much for joining me. I've learned so much from Marty and he has totally inspired me to make my own guitar courses as he brings people so much joy with his lovely guitar videos. I hope you got to know him a little bit better in this chat. So now for information on the sponsor of this entire series. More than 250,000 artists rely on DistroKid to distribute their music, including myself. If you're wanting to have your music available on Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music and Tidal, amongst many more stores, then you should sign up using the link in the description. An account starts at just $19.99 for unlimited songs and albums in 12 months, and with the link in the description, you will get 7% off your first year. If you are writing and producing music right now, then I cannot recommend DistroKid enough. So a massive thanks to them for making this series possible, and check out the link in the description for that 7% discount. But otherwise, I'll see you next week. 